Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be dissertating and talking about misconceptions of Capricorn, I should say misconceptions about Capricorn. Now, I think of Capricorn, I think on the surface a lot, uh, this sign can appear undemonstrative and might come across as cold and callous to people. I think a lot of this is connected with the fact that they are very uh, single-minded and purposeful as far as their business life goes and their career. And I think they have so much energy, uh, concentration of power in this area where it appears like they're just, they're, they're, the emotional side doesn't always seem strong in them. However, being an earth sign, Capricorn, the way I see them, they're their emotions uh, are not going to be as frequent on average as opposed to a, a water sign, but I think they are more uh, sustained, they're more protracted. Now, as far as uh, Capricorn goes, as far as the uh, emotional side to them, well, most people are going to have cancer. I'm sorry. They, most people do, would have the sign Cancer on a house cusp in their natal chart, but Capricorn will have it uh, in a solar or natal chart because it would fall on the seventh house. Now, in Cancer on the seventh house can, at least in the way I see it, can be can show uh, their emotions and, and their relationships show that com that compassionate sympathetic nurturing side and that could be with the significant other it could be in partnerships even in business partnerships perhaps and just relationships in general whether it is uh, a romantic one or a platonic one so Capricorn is not devoid of emotion I don't think by any means they don't express it as readily as many of the other signs would at least compared to most other signs but I do believe they have that and another thing is that if somebody has uh, say they have their son in Capricorn there's a chance they may have a water ascendant or moon and or moon I should say so there's other elements in the chart to be factored in anyway if you just look at it superficially and say well gee uh, this person has a son in Capricorn or their ascendant is in Capricorn and just isolated and so oh, that means they're they're really not showing much emotion which couldn't be further from the truth if you look at the whole chart in most cases because you're gonna see that most people are gonna have the water element somewhere in their horoscope anyway so the thing about it even if it's just in one planet or or whatever it might be whether it be the ascendant or moon or so it's gonna the odds are it's gonna be there in some respect and everybody is gonna have I should say most people and I'm not just talking about the cancer uh, on the seventh house cusp in this case most people are gonna have either at least one of the two Scorpio or Pisces or, or and or Pisces on a house cusp, cusp. so it'll show uh, certain emotions shown in that way um, if Capricorn is rising Scorpio will often be on the 11th house and this person might show emotional intensity and connection with friends there's another thing too about Capricorn now Capricorn the sign is often seen as being very single-minded and rigid in their viewpoint and philosophies now Capricorn now it's one thing now if somebody is a Capricorn Sun say right and they have their Mercury is in Capricorn as well then th this person may be somewhat intransigent and somewhat inflexible in terms of their thinking however there's a good chance there's going to be some mutable element in the person's horoscope too so it'll show certain adaptability as far as that goes someone is excuse me if somebody has the Sun in Capricorn and say their Mercury is in Aquarius well this person will be a little bit more innovative progressive and ingenious in association with their thinking 
uh, as, uh, as far as uh, compared to somebody that was a Capricorn Sun and had Mercury in Capricorn. So, or they might have the Mercury uh, in Sagittarius, where it shows a lot of uh, expansive optimism and the thinking may be philosophical. So, it's not uh, just because someone has the Sun in Capricorn. You can't isolate that alone because there's like a two and three chance they're either going to have Mercury in Sagittarius or Aquarius, and that's more about the thinking, so in communication. And uh, we look at uh, Capricorn, uh, there's another thing get about it. as far as the, the Capricorn about being very uh, super serious and they could appear very stoic now thing about this is I had a Capricorn or Capricorn rising friend and I don't remember exactly what was on the 12th house cusp but I'm sure it was probably Sagittarius now with Sag on the 12th I see a, a Capricorn ascendant showing more their their ebullient side their jovial jocular humor side in private and, and when I would when I would uh, sometimes I would be over his house and we'd be watching a movie or something and he could uh, burst out laughing at some scenes in movies just like anyone else could this was more in private though of course and uh, but at the same time they can be they do have a side and they're and Capricorn people can have, I guess, that wry sense of humor as well. They're can, they can, uh, they have a, a sense of humor, I, I believe, but, you know, like I said, it can be a wry sense, and uh, for the most part, they are generally very serious, but I think around people, close friends, uh, I should say close friends uh, that they know, they could a lot of times let out that humorous and jovial side, and I think they can joke a lot. Um, not joke a lot in general, but more so in pe with people that they actually um, are comfortable being around. Now, I mean, let's look at Jim, uh, Jim Carrey, and he, uh, he's a son in Capricorn. Now he has a different moon in Ascendant. He has his moon in Gemini, which I think this a lot of his um, that jocular side is attributed to. But for uh, he definitely goes against, in a way, I think w what we see in the movies that he's in, because he's so excuse me, he's so comical. We really see a strong, whimsical, and capricious side of Jim Carrey. And I know it's in the movies, but you have to understand that. I've talked about this before in previous videos, that lots of times uh, an actor or, or an actress, I believe in my opinion, excuse me, will be subconsciously uh, linked to uh, roles that correspond with their personalities. And it wouldn't surprise me if Jim Carrey is actually somebody that could be facetious and humorous in real life. I could see him having a very strong, robust sense of humor. So, the f thing about Capricorn is saying, well, that they're not, they're, they're completely not humorous is definitely not a true statement, because I think they can cut loose that way with people. Uh, more, more so, I would think, in private, especially if Capricorn is rising, because Cap Sag would often, Sagittarius would often be on the 12th house cusp, and that would be what they would show others in privacy more and more in seclusion in their own quarters so to speak so anyway people that'll conclude this youtube astrological segment for misconceptions about capricorn stay tuned next time where i'll be continuing my series regarding a planetary uh, distribution in a natal chart Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because a person, astrologically, is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.